Well, uh, after a highly successful launch of Agni 5, India has successfully launched another heavy duty rocket, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle from Sri Harikota. The total cost of the mission is 500 crores and is probably the most expensive and most complex mission to be launched from India till date, according to ISRO. The 321 ton launcher, in its most powerful configuration, will endeavor to put in orbit India's heaviest satellite till date that weighs uh, over eight, 1,800 kilos. The indigenously made satellite satellite called Resat-1 is a unique bird in the sky that has a day and night viewing capability and will be able to see through cloud cover. In fact, according to ISRO, the main purpose of the satellite is to monitor crops and forecast floods during the Kharif season. This all-weather surveillance tool is also referred to as a spy satellite. India already has another more powerful spy satellite called Resat-2 acquired from Israel and launched in uh, 2009 using PSLV. And of course, this is a huge uh, leg up for scientists at ISRO and just minutes after that successful launch uh, we had the ISRO chairman Dr. Radhakrishnan saying that this had indeed been a grand success. Let's listen in to what Dr. Radhakrishnan had to say soon after the launch. I'm extremely happy to announce that the PSLV C-19 mission is a grand success. This is the 20th successive successful flight of our PSLV and it injected precisely India's first radar imaging satellite into the desired orbit. Well, to talk about that successful launch of Resat-1, we have with us our science editor, Pallav Bagla, joining us from our Mumbai studio. And here in the Delhi studio, we have Dr. Ajay Lele, research fellow at the Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis. Uh, Dr. Lele, if I could come to you first. We saw a very celebratory mood in the control room there. Uh, scientists very, very happy with uh, the outcome of this launch. Uh, what is the significance of this satellite? Uh, I think there are two significances. First is that uh, PSLV's track record, it has once again proved for the 20th time in succession that it is one of the most dependable engines available with ISRO. Mm -hmm. I think this makes a, really a statement to the rest of the world mm -hmm. that how good Indian launch system is all about. So this is going to attract some more customers towards the ISRO who are really dying to have this sort of a system to put their own satellites into the orbit. Uh, this is one aspect of it, a commercial aspect. Now let's look at the satellite per se. The satellite has got a twin utility. One is that it has got a strategic significance, other is that it has got a social relevance. As far as social relevance is concerned, right from monitoring of your crops, monitoring the climate changes, monitoring floods and all other related things this satellite is going to do. Right. As far as strategic things are concerned, mm -hmm. it's going to really give you a recurrency data mm -hmm. uh, over a larger part of India. Right. So we'll come back to you in just a bit, but for now let's go across to Mr. S. Satish, ISRO spokesperson who joins us on the phone line. So firstly, many, many congratulations on that successful launch. Clearly, ISRO is very pleased uh, with the way things have gone this morning. Uh, thank you very much. It's a great moment for the country. The 20th consecutively successful flight of PSLE has been realized today and it carries the heaviest satellite built by ISRO on a remote country track. And the mood here is uh, fantastic and uh, it's a great moment for the country. Right, sir. Certainly a proud moment for the country. Uh, also, sir, if you could uh, tell us uh, uh, about the few moments in the run-up to that launch, uh, there must have been some nervousness among scientists in the control room. What was it like minutes before the launch? Yeah, it was a 71-hour countdown. Fortunately, all the operations progressed very smoothly, and as you could see, the vehicle lifted up exactly at 547 and that there were absolutely no hitches. Of course, the entire atmosphere was very tense and exciting, and uh, finally it culminated in a successful flight. 
Right, sir, a successful uh, flight there for the rocket that has now, in fact, uh, uh, placed the satellite in orbit. Uh, also, sir, if you could uh, tell us about the significance of this satellite, what kind of an advantage does it give India, given that this is really the first indigenously built spy satellite, as it were, the last one uh, being uh, uh, a satellite that was actually acquired from Israel. So what kind of uh, a leap is it really for Indian science? Actually, it's a satellite which has capability for 24 by 7 operation. That is, it can take from the image of the earth during night time and also during cloud cover condition. So that's why it's a unique satellite which uh, correctly they were not having. So it's a great development in that case. Certainly. Uh, also, sir, uh, if you could uh, tell us, uh, uh, we know that this is a multi-purpose satellite. Uh, it is going to, uh, you know, uh, serve the purpose of uh, monitoring uh, crops during the Kharif season. Uh, it's also going to be used for disaster prediction. And also, at the same time, this is going to play a crucial role uh, as far as keeping an eye on India's borders is concerned. Basically, it's a disaster management and also monitoring the crops, especially during the tariff season in the entire country is now covered. So, it will be a great tool for uh, the country in these uh, two areas. <laughs> Right. So thanks very, very much for speaking to uh, NDTV. And once again, many congratulations on that successful launch. Let's, in fact, now go to Pallav Bagla, science editor who joins us uh, from uh, our Mumbai studio. So, Pallav, as we have been saying, uh, ISRO scientists, scientists are very, very happy the way things have gone this morning. It has been declared a grand success. Uh, and as Dr. Lili was telling us, this does give India a unique advantage, doesn't it, this satellite? Oh, certainly the the satellite gives India a great advantage. Remember, this is a great week for all of Indian rocket scientists. There are two communities which do rocketry in India. The Defense Research and Development Organization and the Indian Space Research Organization. Exactly six days ago, India launched its Agni-5 missile, which is the longest range missile which can carry more than a ton of a nuclear warhead. It had a highly successful launch from the Wheeler Island off the coast of Orissa in the Bay of Bengal. Now, from the, off the coast of uh, Andhra Pradesh, from Shri Kota, today we had a very successful launch of the Radarsat imaging satellite using the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. Indian rocket scientists should be very pleased with this twin achievement all happening within the same week. Right, that is really a, a huge feather in the cap for ISRO. Uh, Dr. Lele, your thoughts on that? Of course, that's an interesting point that Pallav makes that this comes within just days of the successful launch of Agni 5, which has clearly put India in an elite club. No, definitely. You see, what happens is that as far as rocket science is concerned, it is known as the rocket science, basically because it is so tough to really deal with the issues related to rocket science. Mm -hmm. uh, but India's missile program also, if one sees it, right from 1983 onwards, we have been continuously at it and now reached to a stage where we can go beyond 5,000 kilometers. Uh, so that is the aspect which DRDO has mastered into it. And now similarly, ISRO has also mastered into it. So the good point about both the success of these launches is that both the systems in India, usually all the government run systems are put down upon and people say that they don't do a job. But here the government organizations have proved their worth and mm -hmm. proved their merit. In fact, I think there's nobody who would disagree that our ISRO scientists are certainly par excellence at a global level. So uh, clearly you would say that these two back-to-back -back successful launches a big leg up for Indian science and for ISRO. Uh, you see what happens is that in today's world, not only having a technology is important, but it's correct demonstration is also important. I think this has really showcased what Indian science and technology is all about. And this is definitely not only going to impress rest of the world, but look at the younger community which is now a budding scientist or the scientist for the future. That community is also going to get impressed because now they know that in this country, if you do well, there are opportunities available where you can really study rocket science. And I think from rocket science point of view, this is a very welcome news. Well, that is really a very important point you make.
makes her. So perhaps these uh, uh, successes of ISRO scientists are going to inspire many youngsters to uh, take to rocket science, perhaps, and uh, you know they are perhaps going to see this as a serious career option going forward. Well, uh, on that note, I'd like to thank our two guests, Pallav Bagla and Dr. Ajay Lele, for joining us on that big story this morning. Thanks very much.